Hey, you're finally awake. You've been summoned to this world through an ancient covenant's ritual. Here, you'll find a multitude of races, unknown monsters, and the power of magic. There are also valuable treasures hidden in ruins around the world. Let's leave this temple and set off on an adventurous journey. Although I'm not very skilled, I'll support you with my water magic. This is the line that opens the adventurer story told by Water Enchantress of the Temple. On January 27th, 2022, the deck building set The Grand Creators has been released in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. We've already covered one archetype out of the three introduced in that set, Exosisters, but now it's time to discuss arguably one of the most feared and influential ones, Adventurer. Adventurer is an archetype that is made of different monsters, spells, and traps, none of which share the same name or even resemble each other. The only thing that ties this archetype together is the fact that all of the adventurer cards mention the adventurer token. This archetype is still considered extremely powerful and has some cards of it limited or forbidden in the Japanese card game version up until now and for good reason. But we're not here to talk about competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! It's actually time to talk about how the adventurer cards use card effects to tell a story. Let's get the important things out of the way first. You are the adventurer token. The entire story takes place from the player's perspective, for example, as seen in the art of Fateful Adventure, which we'll talk about later. It's you. The adventurer is summoned to this world by the Water Enchantress of the Temple. The ritual that is taking place is called the Rite of Ramesir, in which the Enchantress summons you, the adventurer, to her world. Not only that, Rite of Ramesir will also place the card Fateful Adventure onto your field alongside the adventurer token. Fateful Adventure, allowing you to add cards that mention Adventure Token from your deck to your hand, will remain on the field to provide you with additional resources each turn. Being a continuous spell, it provides a reminder that the adventure is still ongoing. Not only that, Fateful Adventure will also protect any monster that is equipped with a spell card from being destroyed by battle once per turn, and whenever a monster is summoned, you can take an Adventure Token equip and equip it to your adventurer token on the field directly from the deck. Essentially saying, if a companion joins your adventure, it will also bring on some tools to help you with your journey. Once you leave the temple with the enchantress, it is time to start your adventure, and you will be joined by four companions. Magikor, warrior of relics, who cannot attack without an adventurer token present and can search for additional traps if your adventurer has battled. Celestial Apparatus Tesea, a weird being that can search the adventurer spells from the deck. The Griffin Rider, that can negate any card or effect by shuffling itself back into the deck, which means that the rider needs to fly away after using its abilities. And lastly, the Rideable Dragon, which will be our transportation while we are on the road for our adventure. Each of the companions fills up a role that completes the strategy, and all are meant to join the adventure once the adventurer token is born or summoned into their world which is why they can all just special summon themselves for free whenever the token is on the field. They are your companions on this journey. The Adventure Archetypes provides new settings to the adventure in the form of field spells alongside new tools to fight the enemies in those new areas. This is very similar to a build-your-own-adventure role-playing game influenced by games like Dungeons & Dragons. Your first stop will be the Forest of Lost Flowers. This will be the next part of you and your group's adventure. The field spell Force of the Lost Flowers says that monsters you control, equipped with Starlit Papillon, are unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. What is the Starlight Papillon? The Papillon is given to the adventurer by the Griffin Rider, and is used to show the adventurer the way while they traverse the Dark Forest. When you equip the Papillon to a monster, your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack for each of your adventurer monsters, meaning that the bigger your party is, the less likely it is for your forest dwelling enemies to stand a chance against you. The Papillon will also equip itself back if sent to the graveyard, meaning that the Papillon will always find a way back to the adventure if something happens. Back to the effect of the Forest of Lost Flowers, it tells a story of how you end up on the next level as well. The whole point of the adventurer deck is supporting the adventurer token with equips and companions. When your adventurer token destroys a monster by battle, you can draw a card. But the forest also says that if the effect was activated this turn, you can add another field spell that mentions adventure token from your deck to your hand, essentially allowing you to progress to the next level. And which spell might that be? The last stop for this adventure, for now, 
is the Dark Palace of Zaralam. It is a demonic cavern where monsters of the dark dwell. Magikor will supply you with a new weapon, Danel, the Noble Arms of Light, to help you make your way through the dark caverns of Zaralam. Its effect to gain the adventure token 500 attack for each different adventure companion on your field shows how important it is to have as big of a party as possible on this part of the story, as having a full party will allow your adventure token to grow to a massive 4000 attack. As the Zaralam field spell states, while your adventure token is equipped with specifically Denel, the Noble Arms of Light, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects during the battle phase. The Denel Sword is so powerful it gives your party a great advantage during battle. But who is lurking in the deep dark corridors of Zaralam? It's your final boss, the Illegal Knight. The Illegal Knight and the Curse of Aramatir are unique to this level. The Knight is an enemy that you control. You can return two cards your opponent controls to their hand to give the illegal knight to them. And this is how the deck essentially creates the enemy on your opponent's field for you to kill. So the illegal knight will move to your opponent's field and by using your equips and the adventurer token you will defeat it to gain the rewards. The curse of Aramatir is the only other card that will summon an adventurer token besides Ride of Aramatir, but it will summon it to either field. It's a fact to replace any monster destroyed by battle with the adventure token once they're destroyed is a way of the game designers to show how this curse can mimic the adventurer and in this artwork shows the illegal knight betrayed by his own sword. Zaralam is also able to search another field spell, giving us a hint that maybe in the future we might get another level for your party to continue their adventure through. And this has been the story of the adventure archetype. I hope you enjoyed this wonderful storytelling of how the adventure card effects actually tell a story. We got more videos like that on the channel already and we want to continue making more. So leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more awesome content like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.